Has any of you guys heard of the new horror movie out in theaters right now? It's called Cholesterol, the Dangerous <laughs> Substance. Whew, I, I get scared just talking about it. Why does the word cholesterol have to sound so scary? Why does it sound like such a bad substance? Is there any merit to this reputation? Or is this just like a ploy by Big Pharma to kind of convince us to think this way? Well, tonight I'm going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to dive deep into cholesterol. We're going to talk about what it is in the first place. We're going to talk about why it's elevated in our bodies. And we're going to talk about the dangers of lowering cholesterol with statin medication. See, right again, right here. The HDL is the good cholesterol, we're taught. The LDL is the bad cholesterol. What's funny is that it's completely false. There's not two types of cholesterol. There's only one type of cholesterol. In fact, when you look at this, you can see the HDL and the LDL. You can see this pie chart. All these are is transport mechanisms of the body. They're just carriers. You see. Not only in the blue, you'll see that's what cholesterol is. It's, they both hold the exact same type of cholesterol. It's cholesterol. There's no different cholesterols. Now, you see what this stands for, high density, low density lipoprotein. So they're lipoproteins because you need to surround something with fat or with protein to actually get around the blood and carry it to different tissues. So what LDL does is it brings cholesterol and building materials to sites of damage in the body. So it takes it from the liver and brings it to the body. HDL, high density lipoprotein, takes the cholesterol out of the body and brings it back to the liver to be recycled. So there is no bad and good cholesterol. These are just carriers carrying the exact same type of cholesterol. And that's a big one because most people get that confused here. So cholesterol, what are the, what are the benefits of cholesterol? Well, we already talked about it. If there's damage in the body, you're always going to increase in cholesterol. If there's an inflammatory process, you're always going to increase cholesterol. It is the building block of literally every single hormone in the body. It's the precursor to vitamin D. You need cholesterol to make vitamin D, and we all know vitamin D has many anti-cancer, pro-health qualities to that. It's vital for the nervous system. Your brain is 70% cholesterol and fat, so that's going to be vital for memory. And that's also why memory fog is one of the main side effects of statins in the first place. It's vital for cell membranes. You see, what cholesterol does in your cell membranes is it keeps the bad stuff out of the cell and it keeps the good stuff in the cell. So it's kind of like your regulators at the club. Mood regulation. Again, it's going to help memory. It's going to help your moods. Immune function. Anti-cancer, anti-aging, energy. Because when you, di when you eat stuff to digest it, all those hormones and uh, you know, your bile acids, those are all made of cholesterol that break down your fats into building blocks your body can use. So why, how is cholesterol actually going to be elevated in the body? What, what causes it to increase? And the answer is the stress response, the natural stress response of the body. For example, if we're walking around a forest and we see a tiger, what this stress response is going to do is going to help us buy a short amount of time, buy us time to change our environment, to change our lifestyle, to protect us, to save our life. So what this is going to do is that we're going to increase our stress hormones because you got to increase your cortisol and your catecholamines, your epinephrine, all throughout the body. And what that's going to happen is you're going to notice your heart rate's going to go faster. Your blood vessels are going to constrict so it can spread out a lot faster. It's just like a garden hose. If you put your thumb on it, it shoots out a lot faster because it wants those stress hormones out in the entire body now to every place. It's going to have a lot to do with clotting factors. It's going to release clotting factors in the blood because chances are you might need wound healing. You might need blood clotting if you're being chased by a tiger. So that makes sense. Blood glucose and fatty acids. You're going to increase your body's energy sources. Blood glucose, sugar, fatty acids. So you have this available energy now to help you prepare for the tiger. Body breakdown. And you're thinking, man, you're going to increase body breakdown 
how is that intelligent? Well, body building up, healing, growth, and repair is very metabolically expensive. And that's the last thing your body's thinking about when you're being chased by a tiger. Last thing you want to do is just build up more new tissue. You first need to survive the situation, then you can enter those phases of health. Now what it's going to lower in your body is again the healing growth repair. It's going to lower your immune function because again your immune system is very metabolically expensive. You know, that's why when you have the flu, you get tired. So we don't need to increase our immune system if we're actually trying to escape and promote all our energy towards escaping the tiger. And it's going to decrease factual learning and memory. So you notice when you're really stressed out, you can't learn anything. Your memory just goes out one in ear, out the other ear. Because you can't, it's hard to learn history when you're being chased by a tiger. I'll tell you. Now there's one more thing this stress response is going to increase. And that's cholesterol. Because again, this is going to be for wound healing, for tissue damage and repair. LDL is going to increase in the body, taking building blocks to the other sites of the body to help heal damaged tissue. Chances are you might need that if you're being chased by a tiger. So you see, this is a very intelligent response. It's only meant to last in very small situations, not long term. That's when it gets pathological. So what happens when you're chronically stressed out? You know, when we're chronically at the computer, chronically working overtime, meeting deadlines, slamming energy drinks, coffee, just to stay awake. What happens when we're just eating refined carbohydrates in the form of sugar and high fructose corn syrup? What happens when we're eating trans fats, uh, hydrogenated fats with chemical preservatives and colors? Well, what's going to happen is this is basically what today's world comes up to. Exactly that. You're eating poor food now and you're not exercising at all. So let's look at this. Exercise increases, increases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide then is going to open up blood vessels. So if you don't exercise, these blood vessels are going to be constricted because you're not releasing any nitrous oxide. In addition, these poor food choices, this sugar, actually damage the artery. They actually nick the artery. So this, this, is, this needs repair now because you have this damage to the endothelium, the inner layer of this artery, and you've got to repair it. So if you look at this diagram here, you're going to see a tear in that blood vessel. Now what happens is you're going to increase LDL because your LDL is what brings building materials from the liver to the sites of damage. So it's going to lay cholesterol down that tear on that blood vessel. So what happens is after that cholesterol goes over that wound, your endothelium, the inner layer of the blood vessel, actually grows over it. So when we always hear you have this plaque in the arteries, it's completely false. There is no plaque in arteries. It's actually in the middle of a wall. It's not in the middle of the artery, just like the down picture that you can see right there. And that's exactly what happens. See, cholesterol does not clog arteries. It's just a complete myth. Now, when you're looking at this, do you want to lower cholesterol or do you want to find out the need of why the cholesterol was increased in the first place? And that's a very good question because are you going to go after the cause or the effect? Because the damage causes a lot of things to go on. It causes you to even go more in that chronic stress response, releasing more stress hormones. But why don't we just figure out what causes that damage in the first place, that chronic lifestyle? Why don't we help patients fix that and not focus on something like lowering cholesterol? But here's the thing. If lower cholesterol, lowering someone's cholesterol actually does get people healthy, then I'm all for it. If it increases your ability to be healthy, if it lowers your risk for heart disease, cancer, gives you added years on your lifespan, I'm all for it. Honestly, I just want people to be healthy. I have no hidden agendas here. I want health for everybody. It's a God-given right for everyone. So let's look at the facts. Now here, this study is one of the most breakthrough studies you're not going to hear from your medical doctor, I promise you. 136,000 patients came in with heart disease and each one of those, their lipid profile was measured. What they found, and the conclusion's right here, I blew it up for you, what they found is that half the patients with heart disease had low cholesterol. Low LDL, the bad cholesterol, they actually had low cholesterol. And what they also showed is that 75% of the heart disease patients had normal to low cholesterol. 
So that's a, that's, that, that's a huge majority there. And I also might want to add that in Japan, actually in England, they did a study and they looked at your socioeconomic status. And what they found is that the people in the low socioeconomic status had three times the risk for heart disease. But then they looked at cholesterol levels and they actually had lower cholesterol levels, a lot lower, might I add, compared to the general population in England. So again, you're seeing these lower levels of cholesterol associated with heart disease. Now, other studies show that high cholesterol levels have been found to be protective. Well, you think it has to do with wound healing, repair, hormones. I mean, this is obvious, but again, when it's published in a journal, peer-reviewed, double-blind, randomized controlled trial, it gets our attention. This one, and I like to put these statements in quotations because these are literally drawn straight out from the research. Hypo, hypocholesterolemic, people with low cholesterol, patients had higher incidence of intracellular or cerebral bleeds, which is stroke, depression, and cancer. We don't have a depression, stroke, or cancer problem in the US, do we? <laughs> in fact, there's a strong association between lower cholesterol and early death. So, let's break this down. Low cholesterol levels, higher incidence of heart disease, cancer, depression, early death, and stroke. Well, that sounds scientific to me. Let's lower our cholesterol levels, huh? And here's the references for those facts. All good journals there. Oh, yeah, right here. So, the logic. When you're looking at the logic of all of this, if we know that lower levels of cholesterol actually is associated with heart disease, why are we spending billions and billions of dollars to lower these levels even further? You know, because they're obviously not looking at the science when this comes down to it. And that's where statins come in. And the answer is because statins are a multi-billion dollar industry. In fact, Pfizer, which makes Lipitor, their profits are already exceed $140 billion. Okay? And when you're talking about the history of this corrupt nature of these pharmaceutical companies, you got to look at the healthcare reform in 2010. Kind of the start of this uh, Obamacare, you know, great stuff going on. So what happened is Big Pharma came out. They paid the Congress $250 million so they could have 15 meetings with them. And Big Pharma basically laid out all the requests of what they wanted in this new healthcare reform. The results, Big Pharma got everything it wanted and more. They were able to sell more drugs to more people, get more people sick, Increase their profits, increase their profits, increase their profits. They were so happy with the results, they, con they, contrib they contributed an extra $100 million on free advertising for the Congress to promote healthcare reform. Because of course they're gonna want it, right? You're gonna sell more drugs. And just for the record, statins are literally one of the most highly prescribed drugs in the US, in the world, but mostly in the US, designed to prevent heart disease. Guess what's still the number one killer in the U.S.? Heart disease. Heart disease. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. So this is what the healthcare reform really looked like. You had these people playing just poker with money while the people, us, are sitting here suffering as a result. Now, 250 million that Big Pharma contributed sounds like a lot of money. Like, wow, they've paid that? But in reality, the following year, it wasn't even 1% of their profits. So this is all just chump change. Again, $140 billion for one industry. And then if you take a couple years back, because I got to tell you how much deception and fraud is going on in this. This is not based on science whatsoever. In 2001, I believe, you had nine critically acclaimed experts set new markers for cholesterol. They basically changed the entire definition. High cholesterol used to be defined as anything over 250. Overnight, they changed it to high cholesterol being over 200. They lowered it by 50 points. Now, you're thinking, okay, so what? Well, check this out. When it was over 250, 13 million Americans were candidates for statin drugs. When they, when they changed the level to 200, now it went up to 36 million overnight. It tripled the candidates for statin drugs overnight based on these experts' recommendations. And what's sad is that every single medical doctor in the US goes by these nine 
ridiculous experts, and they found out that eight of the nine have financial ties to the statin drugs. So that sounds scientific to me, guys. I mean, I'm really stoked to live here. I, I'm jumping for joy. So we get off that depressing subject, and we got to go to another depressing subject, the side effects of statin drugs. Because I tell you, cholesterol, I mean, this has been painful to research. Now, it causes cataracts, acute kidney failure, liver dysfunction. Men, 10 times the amount of erectile dysfunction. Women, and I had to put this in quotes because I thought it was a cool term, full-blown type 2 diabetes in women from statins. Now, all five of those are bad, but it gets a lot worse. 11 different randomized controlled trial studies show a significant increase in cancer. In fact, in Japan, they looked at it, you were three times more likely to develop cancer for those who were on statin drugs in Japan. It gets worse. I thought statins were made to prevent heart disease. You get three times the amount of coronary and aortic plaque in your arteries. And it makes sense when you look at what it inhibits. It blocks vitamin K2, which is responsible for removing calcium out of your arteries and putting it into your bones where it belongs. Because again, you don't just have a drug that blocks one thing. You're blocking a lot of things. That's where you get the side effects coming in. In fact, when you have triple, I have to mention this because the study showing they had tripled the risk of aortic plaque. They said this despite the fact that statin users had significantly lower or nearly optimal LDL levels. So that's fantastic, right? They had normal cholesterol, but they were dying and their arteries were calcifying, you know, great. Most famous one though is your statin-induced myopathy. And here's the kicker. When people think of this myopathy, what it is is a disease of muscle tissue. That's what it means. People always just think skeletal muscle. It's not just skeletal muscle. This is all muscle. Statins, and, statins cause myopathy of all muscle. So again, if statins are made to help the heart, they cause myopathy, a damage of muscle tissue. The question's got to be asked. Isn't the heart a muscle? Yeah probably one of the most important muscles in your body. So where you look where statins act, they act on this pathway right here. And the result, I want you to look at the bottom two, cholesterol and CoQ10. Those are two substances your body now cannot make because you're taking a statin. And we gotta, we gotta divert our attention to CoQ10 because this is huge. CoQ10 is probably the most important biomolecule involved in heart function. It transfers energy from food from our cells to food that the cell can use. So you need it, absolutely need it to live, to be healthy, to stay alive. Now, your heart muscle, think about it, it has by far the highest amount of CoQ10 in your body, the heart, because it can't take a day off. Your heart can't take a minute off your heart can't take a second off. It is constantly going, 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 even when you're sleeping. So therefore, it has to have the highest amount of this CoQ10 to deliver this energy, to convert the energy in usable form so the heart can keep going. So when you're looking at this, statin-induced CoQ10 deficiency leads to statin-induced cardiomyopathy, cardio muscle disease. So when you block one of the most important molecules for heart function, what you're left with heart muscle failure. Perfect. So it may not be heart disease, it's just heart muscle failure. So we all know that the damage, the side effects are awful. It, it's, it doesn't take a scientist to look through this. In fact, I took a couple days to look through this stuff. It's easily available. Now, when someone takes a drug, they want to know the side effects. They want to know that. But more importantly, I think the first thing is, will this drug make me healthy and increase my lifespan? I think that's a normal one, because again, if it did that, I would be for it. So let's look at the facts again. Now, this is not just some regular research paper. This is a review of 11 different randomized controlled trials. And what they found that it did not find any benefit for the, of statin therapy on all cause mortality. You absolutely did not live one day longer on statins than you did with people off statins. And it makes sense now when we know that low cholesterols are associated with the 
heart disease, the cancer, the depression, diabetes, it makes sense. But this is just clear as day. They just studied this one factor on early death and it does not change at all. So to go on one more study, I promise this is the last one. <laughs> you got the Illuminant study. Now this literally is the best kept secret in the pharmaceutical industry. They don't want anyone knowing about this. It took me a while to find this one, but it was actually published in the New England Journal of Medicine. What they did is they, they were trying this new cholesterol drug and they actually had to stop prematurely. In fact, stop way prematurely because everyone was dying on this drug. Literally everyone was dying. Increased risk of mortality and morbidity of unknown mechanism. So I don't know what the heck happened, but they just knew they were dying. And then it significantly increased cardiovascular events, the things that's designed to protect, and death from any cause. And what didn't show, it also increased sudden death. So that's just super. You're never going to find this out there. But then they did find that the cholesterol levels were optimal. So rest assured, your LDLs were still low. They just died from sudden death, but it's okay. So this is one of my favorite quotes I found in these articles I'm looking at. These findings on statins major adverse effects have been underreported and the way in which they were withheld from the public and even concealed is a scientific farce. Well, these aren't withheld anymore. These are out in the public. We all know the damage of this. How can someone with the right mindset actually take this drug? It's beyond me. They're not going to live longer. I know that. Because when, you're, when I'm thinking about this, I'm absolutely fed up with our system. I'm fed up that nine crazy experts can make the cholesterol levels for the entire nation. I'm fed up that eight of these nine have financial ties to the drugs that they're supporting. I'm fed up that Congress keeps giving them money. I'm fed up that medical doctors take this advice and prescribe medication to the public, even though the medical doctors do have the patient's true best interest in mind. They really do. They just don't, they're just ignorant of the science and they trust the pharmaceutical industry's advice. But they do have the best interests in mind for the patient. But I'm also fed up with the fact that they don't even read the science that for the medications that they're prescribing. Mm -hmm. Doctors don't know this. I know for a fact doctors don't know this. How can they not know the research out there that they're pushing every day? I mean, it pisses me off. It literally pisses me off. And this pisses me off. We have a patient come in, 58 years old, pain everywhere. He's on a statin for high cholesterol and he's on lisinopril for high blood pressure. Walk, I mean, he just looks like a mess, this guy. He had no life. 90 days later, seeing our office by just restoring his nervous system, getting him healthy, giving him the healthy building blocks, the healthy advice, getting him off the crap, the statins. He has a perfectly functioning nervous system. He's healthy. He's not on any drugs and he's pain free. We do this every day, but we actually get people healthy. Now look at this x-ray on the right. What drug, what surgery can change the one on the left to the one on the right? and give someone their life back and get them healthy. What drug can do that? Well, first of all, drugs can't make people healthy because sick people need drugs. If you give a drug to a healthy person, they get sick. Drugs do not make people healthy. And it's proof right there. What people fail to understand that there's five keys of health. You, first and foremost, you've got to have a functioning nervous system. You've got to make sure that your brain can communicate with the rest of your body. You've got to make sure you're having healthy cells, proper communication, proper nerve supply to the heart so it's working properly. You've got to make sure of that. You've got to have regular exercise. Remember, exercise promotes nitrous oxide production, opens up those arteries. Otherwise, if you don't work out, if you don't walk, if you don't do anything, those arteries are going to be closed and then if you eat bad diet stuff, it's going to nick those arteries causing more cholesterol. But cholesterol is just doing its job, healing the tissue. It's not the problem. It's the chronic unhealthy lifestyle. Proper nutrition, sufficient rest, and prayer and meditation. So I invite you guys to get you and your family checked. Get checked, get a healthy nervous system, and regain the number one asset in your life, your health. Thank you. And references.
if you need some.